when Penn State throws a wet out, fans can expect one of the best atmospheres in college football. In 2021, their Week 3 matchup with Auburn definitely lived up to the hype as nearly 110,000 white-clad fans showed up to cheer the Nittany Lions on to victory. These early season marquee matchups are a great chance for fans to see how the different conferences stack up against each other and to separate the pretenders from the contenders, and in this video we'll break down what we learned about Mike Yurcich's Penn State offense from this matchup with Derek Mason in the Auburn defense. Let's start with a look at Auburn's defensive game plan. The Tigers list their base defense as a 4-3, with four defensive linemen at the first level and three linebackers stacked behind them. In reality, though, they run a pretty interesting multiple-front hybrid defense that gives defensive coordinator Derek Mason a lot of tools to work with as he decides how he wants to stop the run. The play that we're seeing here is actually one of very few where they lined up in what most fans would think of as a 4-3, and here we can focus especially on the structure of the interior line, where we have two defensive tackles lined up in between two stand-up edge players. This front, which lets the Tigers play with three linebackers at the second level, gives depth to the defense and makes it easier for them to get all three of those linebackers into coverage or into pursuit to the edges to defend screens or outside runs. On the other hand, when Mason wants to get more guys inside to fortify his front against the run, he can use this same personnel grouping, walking one of those linebackers up as an edge player to one side, and then pinching his defensive line down to put more big bodies inside. That's what we're seeing here where Auburn's playing more like a 3-4 team. This time, instead of playing with two defensive tackles in between two stand-up edge players, the Tigers have three interior linemen between two stand-up edge players. We can see how valuable that is on this play if we keep an eye on this defensive end right here. He's that guy who's been able to pinch down inside because of the extra linebacker that's walked up on the edge outside of him. If we watch that defensive end after the snap, we'll see that his inside alignment lets him command a double team from the left guard and left tackle, plugging up an inside lane and keeping those offensive linemen off of the linebackers that are stacked behind him, leaving them free to flow to the ball and make the tackle. This flexibility in the front also extended to Auburn's nickel package, which they got into by taking one of those linebackers off the field and replacing him with a fifth defensive back. In this grouping as well, they could play with both 4-2 and 3-4 principles, giving them a lot of crossover between their base and substituted packages. A lot of the run game strategy in this game came from Yurcich matching wits with this variety in the front from Mason. For example, on this play, we see another one of those 3-4 style fronts with three interior linemen, including this defensive end pinched to the inside. Jursic needs to find a way to attack this pinched front, and to do that, he's bringing in an extra tight end, and the goal here is to get an extra body on the edge, and then to seal off all of those defenders to the inside so that you can run outside of them. With that defensive end pinched inside, the tight end and left tackle both outflank him, and so the left tackle is going to come down and block that defensive end, and the tight end is going to get up to seal off the linebacker that's stacked behind him. With those two blockers taking advantage of Auburn's pinched alignment like this, they are then going to bring this move tight end who's lined up off the line of scrimmage to the opposite side across the formation to kick out the linebacker that's walked up to the edge. This opens up a nice cutback lane for the running back who runs decisively and physically to pick up extra yards after contact. For the most part though, Auburn was able to keep Penn State's run game under control. Their longest gain on the ground was a 20-yard scramble by the quarterback on a broken passing play, and they only averaged 2.5 yards per carry. Looking purely a scheme, I'd characterize Yurcich's run game as adequate. Everything was pretty standard and by the book, but they weren't getting much of an extra advantage from scheme in this game, and they couldn't dominate enough on execution to make up for that. The passing game is where things really opened up for the Nittany Lions, and they were especially effective at attacking Auburn's zone coverages. More specifically, Auburn spent a lot of the game in various versions of cover three, so in this coverage, the cornerbacks and free safety will divide the deep zones into thirds, and then that'll leave them with four underneath defenders. These will be two guys that are called curl flat defenders, who are responsible for the short outside zones, and two hook curl defenders, who are responsible for the short inside zones. One concept that Penn State really got going against these coverages is called mesh, and it gets its name because it has two wide receivers run shallow crosses from opposite sides of the field, crossing as close to each other as possible to try and create a pick for any man defenders that might be chasing them. Something that gets left out of a lot of discussions of mesh is actually a third receiver, though, who usually runs an intermediate route directly over the ball. Against his own coverage, this receiver, along with the two meshers, creates a kind of three-receiver triangle, and now we can see why this was so good against Auburn's cover three. Remember that in cover three, the defense has four zone defenders underneath, with two curl flat defenders on the outside, and two hook curl defenders on the inside. When you run mesh against this look, it gives you that three-receiver triangle in the middle of the coverage, where the defense only has two defenders. After the snap, we can see that one of those inside defenders has eyes on the tight end right here, and that tight end is the guy that's running the intermediate route over the ball. 
when we advance the play a little bit more, we see that defender continuing to drop to take that intermediate route away. When he does this, though, he clears out space underneath of him for one of those shallow crossers, which is working across the formation from left to right. The quarterback makes a quick decision and hits that guy with timing, and even with a quick reaction in pursuit by Auburn's zone defenders, he's able to pick up an easy seven yards. This passing attack versus zone was especially effective when the Nittany Lions started to work play action into the equation, and here they're going to do everything that they can to mess with the keys of these two inside linebackers right here. If we keep an eye on this right guard, we'll see him mimicking a power run by pulling across the formation from right to left. Now we're going to watch that play again, but this time let's focus on what this run action does to these inside linebackers right here. The ball snapped, and both of them step hard up toward the line of scrimmage to fit against this fake run play. Now remember, in a zone defense, those are also the guys that are responsible for defending the zones in the middle of the field, and so when they step up like this, it opens up a nice space behind them. Penn State's able to hit their tight end right in that hole, and he's able to go for a nice gain. This same kind of run fake also got Penn State their second touchdown. Here we're looking at the play right before it, and this is going to be a genuine run play. Again, keep an eye on this pulling right guard as he works across the formation from right to left to block power. As we watch this play one more time, look at how aggressive all of Auburn's defenders in the front are, pinching down inside and building a pile at the goal line. We also want to keep an eye on this edge player right here. It looks like he's responsible for taking away the quarterback bootleg or rollout, and so after the snap, he charges hard off the edge straight at the quarterback. Now let's go to the very next play. At this point, Penn State had just run power twice in a row, so again, let's keep an eye on this right guard. After the snap, we see him start to pull from right to left, just as he had on the last two plays, and we can see the impact of that right here is all of Auburn's second-level defenders flow to chase that run action. On the backside, we can also see that edge defender charging hard upfield because remember, he's responsible for the quarterback bootleg or rollout. Of course, on this play, all of these aggressive reactions to the run are really just setting up the edge for the play-action pass. After the snap, we're going to see this receiver running straight down the field, and it's his job to occupy the cornerback and clear out space underneath and to the outside. He's doing this because his tight end is then going to break out to the flat underneath of him. The ball snapped, the wide receiver runs off the cornerback, and the tight end is all alone for a walk-in touchdown, giving the Nittany Lions a 14-10 lead. As if their play-action attack wasn't effective enough, Penn State then stepped things up even more with a few trick plays that served equally well to attack Auburn's zones. This isn't one of them, but it is a run play that's going to set up a trick play later in the drive. The thing to notice here is that Penn State's lined up with two tight ends into the short side of the field. Obviously, when you put two extra blockers to one side like this, it creates extra gaps for the defense to take away, and here Auburn doesn't seem to have recognized that. Those two tight ends, along with the left tackle and left guard, give Penn State four blockers to the left of center, and on the other side of the ball, Auburn only has three defenders, so it looks like the Tigers are outnumbered. To solve this problem, it looks like the Tigers have checked into a blitz against this formation, bringing their cornerback off the edge. The ball gets snapped, he blitzes the run, and if he would have taken a flatter angle, he would have been able to pick up a tackle for loss in the backfield. Penn State's blockers had no idea that he was coming. For our purposes, though, even though this was a run play, we're really interested in the coverage that Auburn's playing behind the blitz. When that cornerback blitzes, he obviously won't be able to cover the receiver that he's lined up over, and so to pick up that guy in coverage, this safety is going to work over the top of him. I've mentioned that Auburn likes to play a lot of three deep zones, and so if we think of this as a version of cover three, we can say that that safety is coming over to replace the cornerback as a deep sideline defender. Now let's skip ahead to this play, which came a few plays later in the drive. Again, we've got two tight ends and a wide receiver down at the bottom of the screen, so what's the defense going to do? As we saw in the previous play, they're going to check into a cornerback blitz off the edge, and they're going to bring their safety over the top to replace him as a deep sideline defender. And that's especially important to remember for this play. In this coverage, that guy's responsible for defending the deep sideline. To attack that guy, the Nittany Lions are going to throw a quick screen out to the wide receiver that he's lined up over, and they're then going to release one of their tight ends up to block him. That creates a major problem. If that safety doesn't fly downhill to attack that block right now, then the wide receiver is just going to run down the sidelines for a nice gain with a tight end lead blocking for him. As the defender here, when you see a screen like this, you have to come up and take on that tight end's block from the outside. If you can do this, you're going to deny the wide receiver access to the sidelines and force him back to the inside where you've got your linebackers and defensive linemen coming in pursuit. And we can see right here that that's what that safety is trying to do. This time, though, Yursich has a great play call to defeat this reaction. 
Earlier, I told you to remember that that safety is also responsible for defending the deep sideline in this coverage. Well, when he has to fly downhill to defend the screen, what happens? He abandons that deep sideline, and on this trick play, Penn State's going to attack that opening by running their other tight end right into it on a corner route. The wide receiver catches the ball, pulls up, and throws a pass to him for a nice gain. So, what are the takeaways from this game, and what does it mean for the Nittany Lions going forward? On the plus side, Penn State's offense was clearly very well prepared for what Auburn was trying to do, especially in the passing game where they were really effective at attacking the Tigers' three-deep zone coverages. On the negative side, that's pretty much all that Auburn ran, and they didn't even run it that well, so this game can't really show us anything about Penn State's ability against other coverages. Can they beat split safety shells? Can they beat man or tighter matchup zones? It's not clear from this game, and so we'll have to wait to see if this was a one-off or if this offense can have the same success against the variety of looks that they'll face over the course of the season. Alright, that's it for this video. Keep checking back on the channel for more breakdowns every week, and I'll see you here next time.